Luke may be a Jedi, but he's also completely heartless when it comes to the dark side of the Force. Yes, I've already looked at the PS4 and Xbox One versions and the PC, but now I'm comparing the two big hitters in the premium console race, the Xbox One X and the PS4 Pro. So the PS4 version looks very nice as you can see here, but the Pro boosts that up even further. But is it a significant boost over what we get on the standard console? Well, the settings are the same, mirroring the high settings from the PC with a mixture as I've already covered and a dynamic solution is used there with likely a checkerboard implementation or a temporal reconstruction method working on that image quality which gives quite a clean and nice looking 1080p image which is a significant boost over previous titles on those base consoles. We get a small boost, not the biggest one we've seen on the Pro, likely due to memory limits I would imagine of a 44% boost right up to 2304 by 1296. Now, I did state before that it likely targets 1440p, but after looking at the final release version and many counts in the game, I'm actually still inclined to think that it doesn't actually do that, and actually it just targets that, because it never goes below or above that from my counts. It seems to sit at that level consistently with no dynamic solution in place. This means that it's a significant boost in numbers, but not really in image quality over the PS4 version. And on a 4K screen, it only marginally looks better than the standard PS4 version. But the Xbox One X boosts that up even further, running a dynamic solution right up to 2160p, but it likely hovers much lower than that. And from my counts, it can drop down to 2880 by 1620 which is still a significant boost over the best on the Pro. It hovers around 56 to 100% better pixel rate. But you can see the difference here between this and the Xbox One, which is the lowest resolution version here, hovering somewhere around the 900p level. And that reconstruction technique does give a much softer and blurrier edge, but there's also some other subtle differences. You can see the shadows that I've circled here, they're missing, the edges are missing on the PS4 and the Pro, but they are present on the Xbox One and the Xbox One X. Now it looks like a reduction in geometry, but this isn't a resolution issue due to the fact that the One is much lower resolution than anything else, including the X, with Microsoft's console becoming the bookend for resolutions. It does appear, like some other touches, that there's some issues with the PS4 versions on the whole, and they don't quite line up exactly to what we're seeing on the other versions. You can also see checkerboard solutions here on the Xbox One X version. You can see it on the lights and the edge of the door. And again here on the PS4 Pro, we see it on the trees and the checkerboard on the branch and the bushes. Now, now these are non-moving scenes, so this isn't from motion blur, and you can see the dithered kind of fuzzy edges to every object in the game and this is what I'm talking about in terms of how the checkerboard solution works. Now this means you get a much sharper, crisper and cleaner version on a 4K screen for the X. You can see it here even on YouTube's compression, the quality difference between the two. And this is significantly better once you plug the consoles into a 4K screen. If you have a 1080p one, then the difference is nowhere near as significant. But if you are playing these consoles on a 4K HDR screen, of which this game fully supports HDR, HDR and it looks beautiful in action, I must add, then the Xbox One X is significantly better and sharper than the PS4 Pro on a 4K screen, but the X certainly has the advantage there when it comes to image quality. Destroyer. The eviscerator is positioned near the Corvus. It appears to be fully functional. At least Hask isn't alone on the Corvus. We might actually make it out of this alive. Keep this Star Destroyer safe. The rebels can't learn about off learn about operation center. Move to intercept that enemy Corvette. On your position. Agent Miko, engage those rebel ships. Yes, Commander, Corvus is on the move. Stay on it! So in a flip of my last comparison, this time the X takes the win over the PlayStation console for the visual quality. But what about performance? Do we see a flip side of that as well? Well, comparing the PS4 Pro to the base PS4, there is a significant improvement on performance. That 44% increase on average of resolution also gives a much better performance metric 
than what we see on the base PS4, coming in much higher overall than the drops we see in single player action, which is the closest you can get. We're only getting around 30 drops in the 9,800 frames tested on both the PS4 base, the Xbox One S and the Xbox One X, which is very good indeed. And it means that the averages are much higher. The PS4 Pro comes in with a 95th and 99th percentile frame rate of 16 milliseconds. So how does it compare against its X counterpart? Well, we see a flip of what we saw on the PS4 and the Xbox One S. This means that even though the image quality is lower, we get higher performance, and that's what we see here on the Pro. It's not a huge leap, just like the difference. You probably wouldn't notice it if you weren't comparing it like for like, like I am right here. But if you do, then you see that small gap of around a half frame to one frame per second difference between the base PS4 version and the Xbox One S and here in the advantage of the Pro and the Xbox One X, which is a welcome boost if nothing else. So the visual quality is enhanced, but the performance is ever so slightly worse, but you'd be hard pressed to notice. The difference between the versions is loading. It can be around 46 to 50 percent quicker on both the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X when reloading from dying in a checkpoint, but online multiplayer is very slow indeed across all versions. Well, as I covered before, this is something that was much better when the game wasn't fully released, but now it's out. I'm seeing a lot more performance issues on the servers on every single version going. So this means that now you get a much worse performing title than you did two weeks ago when I covered it on the X and the S and also the PC, which means you can get longer hangs, rubber banding and lurching in online servers quite regularly across all versions. It really is indiscriminate on which one it picks. So in terms of the performance metrics, none of them hold a lock solid 60 FPS and they kind of dip regularly at certain points, both from GPU load, likely CPU load as well, as well at times and even memory bandwidth. I'm sure there's many issues, but most of the issues when you're playing the game from performance come from the net code or the online server issues rather than actual hardware issues at all. So this means that the game performs well overall, unless of course you get a bad match and then you can have lurching and problems as you play through with some examples here on both versions and I've already covered in my previous analysis. It doesn't ruin the game but it certainly makes it frustrating when you're having these issues and I really hope DICE concentrate and EA give everyone the resources to fix these issues quite quickly because they will ruin the longevity of this game and its lifespan if people are having these consistent issues and rubber banding is something that plagued Battlefield 4 and I really do not want to see it overtake this title which at the moment is something that really is frustrating me whilst I'm playing. Which may be one of the reasons why I'm just not really into this title overall. I think the weapons and the maps and everything else just kind of don't really gel. Some of them are too large. I think the vehicle sections are very good, but I think the on-foot sections can be quite a grind. For some of the hero sections being completely overpowered, you can't escape because they're all too fast. And that can make for a slightly frustrating game at times. 
But none of that should distract from what is an absolutely gorgeous game across all versions. Resolution differences aside, this is a stunning looking title and really is testament to Battlefront itself and the Star Wars legacy that it delivers so impeccably. This level here is one of my favourites with the storm, the water and all the detail. It is a stunning piece of work from DICE and Frostbite and everyone else involved in the game from Criterion and Motive. It is an impeccable looking title both visually and technically. When you take into account the visual quality across all versions and the high refresh rate you're seeing this at, it is really an impeccable delivery and Frostbite is such a great engine. But it's currently let down by those network issues which are really creeping into the enjoyment of the game and I hope EA give everyone the time and money to fix those issues quickly. Anyway, that's it for now. This is the full analysis of Battlefront across every single version you could possibly play. If you like this or anything else that I've put together, then please hit the like, subscribe and share where appropriate. If you're really feeling generous, you can also follow me on Twitter and support me on Patreon. I'm completely self-funded and independent. And as always, you guys and girls take care, and I'll catch you on the next one. conflict in you of course there's conflict in me i'm not blind i know what the empire is capable of but what else is there a choice the rebellion no a choice to be better may the force be with you